Hey guys, well my February 15th DVD update, where I talk about all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the last three weeks. I have a lot of things to show with this update, a lot of DVDs and Blu-rays I really am excited to talk about. Now the first one doesn't actually come out till tomorrow, but there's this one store in Baltimore. I'm not going to name the store, but it's like this place where everything that comes, if you go there Wednesday, the Wednesday, the things that are normally coming out the following Tuesday, they have them there already on Wednesday. So they have everything six days early. They didn't have the one I wanted to talk about, Cabin Fever 1, but they had Cabin Fever 2. So luckily enough I was able to review this for this update and people don't have to wait. Because this is one I really wanted to be able to review for this update. And um, this is Cabin Fever 2, directed by Ty West. And Ty West recently directed um, House of the Devil, which I'm going to talk about later in this update. And um, I know there's a lot of problems with this movie. Like, um, Ty West pretty much doesn't want his name on this thing because of all the problems. Basically, he made the film, this is basically what I've heard, is he made the film, Lionsgate, or whoever produced the studio, the studio that produced it, did not like the film at all. And they basically took everything he did, recut it from scratch, changed everything. And from what I heard, it was basically like an Eating Raul movie. There was basically a real, like, weird comedy mixed with extreme gore, real throwback to 70s and 80s horror films and what this the movie is now up until the very end which was all reshot the whole ending was totally reshot the end animation was reshot I'm not ruining anything about the movie itself but basically it gets to about 70 minutes and then it becomes somebody else's movie and I would love to have seen what he originally made with this film. This is something that I've been wanting to see for so long. I remember it was shot in 2007, I believe. Finally came out after all these years. Basically, though, the movie picks up right where the first movie left off. Um, Ryder Strong has a very small cameo in this one. He's basically in it for about 15 seconds. But I'm glad that at least he came back to wrap his part of the story up. Basically, it starts with... Um, someone being hit by a car, I'm sure you can pick who it is, and it's not spoiling anything since it's in the first two minutes of the movie, but someone's hit by a car, and Giuseppe Andrews' character, Deputy Winston, um, goes to the rack and he's like, don't worry about it, man, it's just a deer, man, no, man, it's one of those deers, and it's messed up everything in my life, man. And Giuseppe is outstanding in this. He is the best thing in this movie, his character, and he has a, a scene in here with, um, Judah Freelander, who um, has done a lot of independent films and a lot of weird horror movies, and he's—I think he's on Thirty Rock or Big Show now. But he still does these fun movies. And um, there's a scene that he basically works at the water plant. Basically, the movie starts with as like the last movie ended with all the water being transported out of the town, and this is basically Giuseppe trying to track down the water, and all the water basically goes to a school, and. Um, Everyone that drinks the water, you know, it's like a flesh-eating virus, and they all start dying and going crazy. And everybody's drinking this at the prom, and the prom scene, there's like, um, there's actually a scene this that totally mimics, which I love, the prom night scene in, um, you know, the movie Prom Night. They use the same song, use a lot of the same angles, and they even made the prom like a disco prom, which was great. You never see that anymore. This movie, though, Ty West... Just even this version of the movie is outstanding. I would love if Lionsgate, you know, put out his version. And the thing is, if this movie was, you know, going to go out to direct to DVD anyway, what's the problem with just putting out his version? Who cares? You know what I mean? Just put it out. It's not, you know what I mean? If that's the version he wants out, I think they should put out his version. Hopefully, you know, they get it together. Maybe the Blu ray, which is no, there's no Blu ray this yet. Maybe the Blu ray would be the unrated director's cut. Who knows? I would think that, you know, that would be the smart thing to do, especially since he's upset with the film. That's bad publicity for the film. So you would think, you know, one day we'll see the real movie. But even this version is really good. Ty West did a really good job. It's a great throwback movie. Very gory. I don't know. I loved it. But I'd love to see the his version of it. Because I can, I can tell that it was cut so short that there's got to be at least 20 minutes of stuff that they took out. The next one I got is Frank... Helen Lauder's film, and Hank, Frank Helen Lauder did um, Basket Case, and ba all three of the Basket Case films, and Frank and Hooker. He was a very cool 80s director who disappeared for basically from like, since 1993, and this is his first movie in years, and it's called Bad Biology. And it's basically about this guy who has like a mutant Johnson, and this woman who has a mutant vagina. 
and it's a very strange film, very, very difficult to explain, and very, very difficult to explain in a PG manner, but it's super twisted, a total throwback. He shot this on 35mm. It is so weird and so cool, and um, one of Joe Franz's friends I know was in this, who was there was this rapper that he did one of his music videos for, um, Vinny something. But, you know, basically there's a lot of rappers in this that did a really good job and um, a couple, like, cameos and whatnot. But this was very cool. And, I don't know, it's very difficult to explain. It's definitely something to check out, though. But it's very weird, too weird to explain in this. Um, the next one I got is a Ryan Nicholson film. And I reviewed his film um, not that long ago, Hangar, which if you haven't seen that, it's definitely one to check out. And Gutter Balls is basically about another, it's an 80s throwback film and um, one thing I loved about it was this music in this movie it's um it's done like the Italian synth like in Suspiria which really fits this movie well but it starts off it's basically a group of these two bowling teams and it's not like you know like like normal bowling it's like these these one team is like a normal group the other team is really crazy and um, at one night after they're bowling they're like you know pushing each other around and everything getting in fights but one night the bad bowling team rapes one of the girls from the good bowling team. It's, it, it's weird to explain it, but, but then the next day they're all back there again having a competition, and one by one everyone's killed off in this bowling alley, and um, they're killed off with really inventive, twisted deaths. This is definitely, if you like 80s gore fest kind of films, like total slasher throw, throw, throwback films, this is definitely one to check out. And like I said, if you haven't seen Hangar, that's one to check out as well. But um, also go to their plotdigger.com, um, I believe is the website, to look for uh, news on upcoming films and whatnot. But this is definitely one that I really liked, and it's from um, Danger After Dark, which is put out, I, I know a lot of Japanese films I've gotten, like Japanese and Asian horror films. The next one I got is a Cameron Romero, which is George Romero's son, I believe. Yeah, I know it's pretty sure it's his son. Yeah, film like, yeah son of... And um, this I've had this for a while. I never got to watch it. I'm finally reviewing it. And it's basically like, if you remember in the Texas Chainsaw remake, that one woman that's like, oh my, 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 my. Well, it's basically almost like a spin-off. I know it's not. They couldn't say it is. But it's very similar in a way. This It's the fat woman from that. And it's about a group of these kids um, hitchhiking. And then um, they go with this weird guy. And they go out and, the, and um, the car breaks down. So they walk through this farm trying to cut through to the main highway. And um, they get to this house. And the one son's like crazy. And the, and the mother one mother's like, it's very much like a Texas Chainsaw. Like I said, it's so similar. It's weird. And um, but basically all the kids are getting killed off in there. And I don't want to say what's happening to them. But it, it's, it's definitely a decent throwback. I liked it. It's not the greatest movie, but it's a fun, you know, sheets and giggles horror movie. And, you know, George Romero's son did a really good job. I would definitely look forward to seeing more stuff from him. And it's not like a, you know, any, you, it's very different than a George Romero movie. It's, well, it seems a little bit like the crazies kind of, that kind of thing. It's, it's cool, though. The next one, I think, I, might, I got this early. I think it just came out. And this is the movie that Gary Coleman is having like a sheet fit over. He is so pissed about this movie because they put in like a full frontal nude scene of him, which I don't know if it was him or not, but it's a problem and he won't talk about it anymore. So it's another thing Gary Coleman doesn't want to talk about. He doesn't want to talk about different strokes. Now he won't talk about this, which is so, I mean, he makes this movie. Without Gary Coleman, this movie would be crap. But he makes this thing, and it's midgets versus mascots, and it's basically about midgets, which is you know not politically correct, and it even says um, uh, little people you know on there, and um, versus mascots. So it's basically like mascots and midgets going in competitions against each other. And the thing with this is with Gary Coleman in this, there is times when you cannot tell if it's real or if he's genuinely getting pissed off. And I think a lot of this, he was genuinely pissed. And there, he was, and this is a side of Gary Coleman that I have never seen. And it's the kind of, it's a side you heard about, about him getting mad and being mean and being crazy. And this is what he is. He's saying the F word, he's getting real filthy, dirty. And I did not know he would, he would, that he would come across like that in a thing like this. 
this is worth checking out for Gary Coleman. Gary Coleman, every scene he's in is hysterical in this thing. It is ridiculous. Absolutely, this movie is absolutely ridiculous. The movie's not itself isn't very funny, but Gary Coleman makes this. And it's I love how the front says Gary Coleman, Jason Mewes, um, Scotty Pippen, I'm not sure who that is, and Ron Jeremy. And Jason Mewes, I'm not kidding here, is literally in this movie for 15 seconds. And you're see where, but 15 seconds. The next one I got is a show I really like from on the History Channel. Sometimes after work, and sometimes you know, you just I just like to chill down and watch. You know, you know, real just like not stressful shows, just fun. You know, just like you just watch and like oh yeah, like the Food Network shows. And this one I really like called Pawn Stars. And I don't know, I just love this show. I know it's all scripted, and you know it's it's set like you know they set up the meetings. It's not like people just randomly come in. They actually find the interesting people, you know, thing with people with really interesting things. Because if it was all real, it would just be people bringing in like DVDs and CDs and like you know just crap you don't even want to see. You know, it's like I got this DVD of you know Mikey Mark. I'm like all right, I'll give you thirty cents for it. But this basically is like these three got um. It basically, they make it like there's only these three or four people working at this place. It's actually like, you know, I'm sure, dozens. But it's the father, like this old guy, he owns the business, then his son, and then his son. It's very cool, though. It's basically just them looking at items, talking about them, like discussing them. Like, oh, this is a real coin from the Civil War and all that. I don't know. I like it. And it's it's been doing really well on TV. I know... Um, I don't know, now the pawn shop is like crazy. They say thousands of people are in there all the time. But the thing about scripting and everything is you really would have to script it. I mean, because if you actually shot in here during real business hours, there'd be people everywhere talking, ruining the takes. So you have to like have specific times to shoot. The next one I got, I went to that Big Lot store and bought a bunch of random DVDs, the things I didn't have and everything. And I got the Tales from the Crypt for $3, double feature. And the Demon Knight movie, I always thought was was okay, but I never loved it. Even as a kid, I saw the movie like when I was maybe 11, and I never really loved it. It's decent. Billy Zane is really good. I always like wonder, like, wh why is Billy Zane not in better things anymore? Like, he doesn't do much of anything anymore, and he's so good. And he did so good in Titanic. Yes, I like Titanic. And then he kind of just disappeared, and he was in, like, some softcore TV shows and stuff. It was, like, weird. It's like, what? But um, the, the, the one on this, Bordello of Blood, I had never watched before. And I always thought it was going to be crap for some reason. I always thought it was, like, a direct-to-HBO movie for some reason. I remember as a kid, they used to always be playing it on, like, USA Up All Night and stuff. And I, I like Bordello of Blood a lot better. It stars Dennis Miller. And yes, Dennis Miller's acting. And, I mean, he's good. I don't know why he doesn't do more stuff. He did that show on HBO talking about politics, and then that was it. And he doesn't do much acting. He does, like, every, like, five years he might do something. But it's basically, um, Corey Haynes um, goes missing. Like, Corey Haynes' sister is trying to find... No, it's Corey Feldman is the brother. Corey Feldman disappears, and Corey Feldman's sister in the movie is trying to find him. And he's, you know... It's very hard to explain. I really liked it, though. This is definitely for three dollars. It's worth it. And I got this at the um, one of those red box machines. And I, you know, you can buy stuff in there for like five dollars. This thing sounded interesting. It really wasn't anything to be that very good. And it's Chuck Williams presents Halloween: The Happy Haunting in America. It has that weird monkey from, um, you know, that um, the with the Ghostbusters. I'm Spencer. I'm Tracy. Well, like that whole show where, like, like if you look like if you pushed like this, the set would fall down, and they used the same like three sets in every single episode. Like every time they went to a haunted castle, it was the same set, and, it, and they didn't dress it or change it at all. But um, this is basically like going around and showing haunted houses, and um, it's okay. I, the thing is, I've seen it done so much better on like the Travel Channel. It's okay though. And this one I got, <coughs> and I never love this film. <coughs> Coughs. I just had a shower. I'm just like, um, it's big girls don't cry, they get even. This movie's okay. It's kind of like Home Alone, where the, or more like a Mac in the Middle, where the character talks to you the whole movie, like, well, my family, they always give me a lot of crap, and I'm running away. I'm out of here. It's basically like that. The girls talk to the camera the whole time. Sometimes I don't like that. My Mac in the Middle, it works for the most part, but sometimes I hate when the characters are always talking to the camera. It's just like, let's just see the movie. I don't know, I never was a huge fan of that. 
And it's basically the one girl runs away. So it's a good 90s movie. There's a lot of cool people. The one guy from the bird cage is in it. The son. And this girl was in Home Alone. It's worth watching, but I didn't. I don't love it. Now this one is another one I got for $3 there. And it's The Astronaut's Wife. I don't really have a whole lot to say about it. I always, I always remember the end of it. And I got this one. Here's looking at you, Warner Brothers. This is a documentary on the Warner Brothers studio. And I think this was like available in like a set. And like they always have weird things in that big lots. And I think this was in a big set that like if you bought like it was like a big collection of all the era Warner Brothers films. And this was like a feature or something. But it's an early 90s documentary hosted by Clint Eastwood and a bunch of other people. It's interesting. It's de it's definitely an interesting look at it. I wish it talked more about some movies, though, that I really liked. It. Like, it showed a clip from Pee-wee, but mentioned nothing about it. And at Walmart now, they have Blu-rays in these two packs. They just got these for $19.99. They have, like, at least 30 different ones. This one I got for $19.99 is Something About Mary and Me, Myself, and Irene. And I've been wanting to get Me, Myself, and Irene because it's, it's been 20 everywhere else. But this, you can get both for $20.00. And there's a whole bunch there. They have a bunch now of Blu-rays for like $7 and 10 And I got Hard Rain, which is another weird one. I, I can't really talk much about it. I haven't seen this in years. But it's I think it was like 10 or 8 or 10 something like that. The next one I got, this one got a lot of bad reviews. A lot of people were like, it really wasn't very funny. And the movie was not great. It, it's I, A lot of the therapy sessions in this were just like, they were not funny. You're just like... D -d -d I don't know. And the thing that was weird, though, is the trailers made it look like the island was like a bunch of green screens. They actually shot in the real island, and it, it looked cool. It was a cool, I was like kind of like a um, Weekend at Bernie's kind of island. It's kind of like a Weekend at Bernie's sort of movie. And that's a weird connection. It's like, a, you know, there aren't too many island movies. Like when people go on these trips, there was, lately, though, they did um, the Heartbreak Kid remake, but they shot that, like, in Hawaii or, like, California or something and made it look like it was some other island but this one they actually go there and it's couples retreat it's basically um the one the two of the couples are having problems and um, they try and bring all their friends along to this cu this couples retreat where they you know talk about their problems and they basically want to bring all their friends along so they get a group rate and they get you know get their cheaper and everything and I don't know I thought it was funny some of it it kind of had that like that 90s kind of movie feel as I, th I liked but the problem is there's some of the scenes in it just, just go on and on. I feel like Vince Vaughn sometimes just like discusses things so much. He's like, well, you know, if I did this, you know, this, this. Yeah, he just discusses things. So even I, I even got Jurassic Park, The Lost World to watch recently. He's even discussing things in that. I mean, he always discusses things in this funny way. It's just like, but now he's got these big rings under his eyes. He never looks like he never sleeps. And he's like, well, I, could, I, could, I didn't really get a lot of sleep because, you know, there's like mice in the walls and stuff. You know, but I don't know, you know. But, you know, if you watch a lot of Vince Vaughn movies, I like Vince Vaughn, but sometimes the discussing goes nowhere. But um, the next one I got is a Melissa George movie, Triangle. And it's, um, she kind of reminds me of Susan George, who was in Straw Dogs. I always, I for some reason thought that it was her daughter. It's not, though. But this movie... Like there's, this cover isn't as good as the the DVD covers the, the guy with the thing on his head, like the killer. But this is one of those movies when you're watching it and like after it's over, you're like, oh, like it doesn't like go the way you want. And I'm not ruining anything about it. It's just like oh. there's some movies like that, like The Family Man, and just a couple of them. They just don't end the way you li would like them to. It's like just depressing. But basically, it's about her, Melissa George, is and a whole bunch of friends go out on this yacht on a cruise, like a, just like a one day cruise out fishing and just screwing around out there. And they end up in a big storm and they go below deck They and the thing flips and they basically go, like almost die in the ship. And um, then they see a gigantic boat, like a Titanic boat. And they get on the boat and then Susan George's, Melissa George's character feels like she's been there before and has this extreme deja vu. And then, you know, things keep repeating. It's almost like a Groundhog Day and you have to do things a certain way to make things happen. But I will admit everything connects really well in this. Like there's all these little details that all connect little by little. But it's 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 very it's very creepy movie. They had a cool boat they filmed on. It's it's worth watching. It's not like by any means great though. Next one I got is Zombieland, which I really liked 
and it's um basically if you haven't seen this, the whole world is overrun by zombies, and um, Jesse Eisenberg's Eisenberg's character is basically on his own. Then he meets up with Woody Harrelson, and they're all trying to like you know fight off the zombies together. Then they meet up with Emma Stone's character, and then it's weird. It's hard to explain, but it's a really funny zombie movie, and um, I know they're making like I, th I think I heard one or two sequels to it, which I'd be interested in watching it. Um, I don't know, it's, it's worth watching, though. There's not a whole lot to say. The next one I got, a friend of mine that has a DVD store, always every once in a while sends me just random stuff to watch. He's like, you can just have these. And um, it's Rovering Mars. This is always one I remembered I always was thinking about buying. I don't know about this thing. Like, I, I thought it was actually going to be real footage of, like, the thing on Mars, that they, like, put this thing on Mars. That, I thought it was going to actually be footage of the thing driving around Mars and looking at it. But I guess, like they couldn't send HD video back. It would have probably taken like 35 years to send that back, so all they could send back is like, you know, just pictures that this thing, that Rover's Mars. I don't know, I, I just had this feeling that it was going to be like really cool video of it just Rovering Mars. Every time I think of Mars, I think of like the Three Stooges movie. When they, when they go and it's that alien on Mars and it's like a really cheap movie. I don't know, this thing is, it's interesting, I guess. There's not a lot to say about it. I mean, it, it wasn't what I hoped. Now this one is Ty West's other film, which is another, which is better than Cabin Fever 2. This is absolutely a must own, and it's um, The House of the Devil, and it's the one girl's character, and I don't think she's done a whole lot of movies. I'm not sure though. I didn't recognize her. I, she's probably done going to be doing a lot more lately though. And um, basically though, she wants needs. She's got. She just bought an apartment from D. O. S. Stone's character, and. Um, she needs to get money fast to pay down the do pay the down payment. So she f sees an ad at the college campus about being a babysitter. So she calls on the payphone, and no one picks up. Then a second later, the payphone gets a call back, and um, they say, you know, they want her to watch something in the house. Basically, they just want her to stay in the house and watch this kid. And um, things just get very weird in the house. And um, Tom Newen, who was from, is it Tom? Noonan. I never say his name right. He was in Last Action Hero as the very creepy villain with the axe thing that always creeped me out as a kid. I've seen him a number of times at horror conventions and never got anything from him because he always creeps me out. And um, the other woman in it is Mary Woodrow. Woodno. It's Damn, I'm pronouncing some of these words, names wrong. Wurno. From, basically, she was from Eating Raul, and, um, which, you know, I know the director loves Eating Raul. It's a great movie. And she was also in like some really weird B horror movies, like this one um, the director of Hobgoblins did, which I loved in a, um, a movie theater. And um, something movie di death. It has all these different titles to it. I, I never remember. I know it's going to be coming out again on DVD, but um, it's a satanic cult movie. And I, the one thing I love too is the casting of the the son. Of Tom Newton, who looks exactly like him. He's not even related. I thought they were, but he was great casting. Definitely a must check out. Next one I got is 28 Days Later. They had this for $10 on Blu ray. And um, if you haven't seen 28 Days Later, it's basically a guy wakes up um, in the hospital and everybody's missing in the world and it's zombies and it's him on the run and everything. It's I, I've always loved the movie. The thing it, it's this isn't one of those movies you need on Blu ray. It was only ten dollars, so I just wanted to get it because I just like to basically for Blu-ray. If there's a movie that I already have on DVD, I pick the ones that I really, really like and would want to have on Blu-ray, so I get them. And um, it it looks a little bit better, but the thing is, the movie wasn't even I don't think shot HD. It was shot on consumer, like you know, four hundred dollar cameras, which really adds to the film. The second movie was not shot that way, so it was a little different. But um. Uh, if the second one was on Blu-ray, I would get that for ten dollars. The last one I got is Michael Jackson's "This Is It," and it's basically it's not like a documentary on him as much as it's more just footage of the concert. And I watched it; it's pretty good. It's it's not a, a lot of the stuff isn't in HD, and it really wasn't intended to be seen by anybody than like you know just for maybe behind the scenes stuff for like a, the CD that would have come out because like I think there would have been a real fit of stuff with the concert. You know, they were shot professionally. Because, I mean, this stuff was shot decent, but it's not, it was not really meant to be seen. Things weren't fleshed out all the way. But it's very interesting to see this and to see, I mean, that Michael Jackson really was 
he really came back at this point. I mean, he was doing an amazing job with his dancing, and for somebody his age, he was doing great. And, you know, I know there's a lot of things bad said about Michael Jackson, but nothing changes that he really made good music, and music that really lives on. So, I mean, no matter how you feel about him, and, you know, I don't want to get into my opinion about it, because, you know, you never know. You don't really know what happened, so you can't really say any judgment on it. You can just have a, a view about it. But um, it's a really, it's a, it's a nice documentary, you know, showing the last days of, you know, what he was doing. It's definitely worth checking out for Michael Jackson fans. Anyway, everyone, thanks a lot for watching and for subscribing. We hit past 20,000 subscribers, which thanks a lot for subscribing. I mean, it really means a lot, and thanks for watching. Anyway, though, I'll see you guys in probably about three weeks. And, um, and I'm sorry I didn't get to review Cabin Fever 1, the, the director's cut, Blurry, which is coming out tomorrow. Definitely pick that one up. Anyway, though, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.